it's John Rob here with the um, latest obsession, which is uh, with Jez Kerr, the legendary bass player from ACR. And Jez is going to be talking to us about his obsession or interest or passion in painting. So, Jeremy, <laughs> painting. <laughs> uh, yeah, painting. Uh, well, I mean, um, maybe we should make it more generally about art. But, but as far as painting goes, uh, because of lockdown, I've started to, uh, I started painting. I mean, I've always sort of, uh, <clears throat> always been a bit of a drawer. When, when we used to play, uh, when we were in the van, traveling all over playing gigs, I always had a little book with me uh, and a couple of biros, maybe a couple of colored pencils and spent all the time just, you know, doodling basically. I've got about 10 books now <laughs> full of doodles from uh, lots of different places. Well, from the last sort of 40 years really, yeah. So what kind uh, of stuff? What yeah? What kind of style would you do then? Would those be <laughs> sort of so sketchings, etchings, drawings, just, cartoons? Just, yeah, just sort of little pictures with uh, with biro, lots of uh, crazy, intense sort of you know biro work, and you know pretty primitive, crappy little drawings really, and just anything, nothing you know, just a passing the time really. And uh, yeah, I find uh, you know. Uh, the actual act of painting or drawing or whatever, very therapeutic. You can just sort of drift off. Uh, you know, it takes up the time. <laughs> so, so, so in a sense, for you, the arts will come out in play, making music, playing music for the last 30, 40 years. Uh, because we can't really do that now. It's actually switched more towards the, the more solitary pursuit of drawing and painting. I got into painting because of lockdown. Was sort of stuck in a room for ages. And so, how, how much has your art itself actually changed? Is it, um, you know, well, in the lockdown? You, you say you were just drawing with barrows before. Yeah, uh, yeah. The it's the first time I saw, I did lots of drawing when I was uh, when I was working at the post. Um, I did loads of drawings. I was drawing every day, really. Just uh, it was sort of in between times when we weren't working. You were sitting there just with just time to spare, and I ended up sort of doing little drawings. Um, I've got I've got thousands of them. I'll show you maybe a, a, a photo of them later behind me. Uh, but um, it's, in lockdown, I sort of decided I wanted to sort of paint, and I, and I had some watercolors and a little sketchbook, and so I started just doodling in that. And then, you know, as I say, I was watching lots of uh, programs on YouTube about artists that I like, and, and finding loads of artists that I'd never heard of, and yeah. and really got into their stories and their process, you know, and what their stuff looked like. So. I sort of developed a little bit and then I got some acrylic paints uh, and uh, I had a few bits of cardboard that I painted a few things on and then I got a couple of those little canvases as presents. So I did, uh, I did a couple of things on that and I was trying to, when I started off, I was trying to draw uh, and then paint figuratively uh, and it wasn't really satisfying. And I just, I, what I really liked was just putting the paint on, you know, and just sort of, I can remember my very first art class uh, in primary school, uh, the nuns <laughs> taught me well. They said that the very first thing was they gave you a crayon and a piece of paper and they said, take a line for a walk. Yeah. Uh, just basically just took a line for a walk. But I really remember it. It was something, you know, uh, I don't know if, it, if it, before that I'd have done that, you know. And uh, I was fascinated with, yeah, in the process of putting marks on, like cave paintings, you know, you wonder why you're doing it. <laughs> Uh, and what does it satisfy? And uh, anyway, so uh, yeah, I got some acrylics and I had a couple of bits of card. I had to find things to sort of paint on, and I was uh, I ended up uh, watching a few a guy a guy who, who bought some these really good artists, and he does this French course in Paris that you can pay onto, and he painted on plywood, uh, which is a lot cheaper than canvas. So I thought, <laughs> oh, well, that's a good idea. So I went to B and Q. Uh, and have a look at bits of wood. And I ended up getting some MDF, uh, two thicknesses. One was nine millimeter, the other was five millimeter. Uh, and uh, cut them into different sizes. And I've been painting on those. Do you uh, find it changes the way you work the surfaces you paint on? Completely, yeah. I mean, I did a painting uh, a while ago. Uh, uh, yeah, after all this figurative stuff and I was trying, it wasn't really working. I, I kept, what I kept on doing was that I'd do a painting on a canvas. And I just ended up doing it like six times, six different paintings on the same canvas because I was, I was never happy. It didn't, you know, sat, it was like, you know, that's crap. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and then one, the, then the next, I had a clear canvas and I thought, oh, I'm, you know, I just dubbed some paint on it and I left it there. And I, I think I left it there for about a week 
and just staring at it. <laughs> and it was just a yellow, it was just a yellow line across. But I really liked it and was happy with it, you know. I think that was the first thing that I painted that I was actually thought, oh, that's good. That I don't know why, but it's good. Is, is, is so, your yeah. approach to painting similar to the way you would make music, or are they quite different? Yeah. When I started out playing music and not, you know, had no formal training, and uh, picked up a bass and just, you know, but was with a couple of other people that couldn't play either, uh, and you know. Together we made something created, you know, songs or whatever, what, you know, a noise basically. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same with the paint thing, yeah. It's like the, 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 you know, your limitations. Hey, I'm not a great drawer, but I do like putting paint on, uh, and uh, I do, I do like looking at paints as um, different painters' work and what, you know, the way that they, how that the process that they use, you know. One of my favourites, one of the early ones that I got into was a guy called Howard Hodgkin. He's a British painter and his process is really weird. He, 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 I think it's, yeah, he thinks about uh, something that happened maybe at a time and, and his paintings are all sort of pretty abstract and just colours. Uh, and it takes him, you know, maybe two, three years to do a painting. He'll turn, he, and he, ha he has them turn against the wall and goes into his studio and... Uh, you know, they're all lined up face backwards and he'll, he'll turn one and, and just do a little bit of work on it and then turn it back and maybe not look at it again for a year. <laughs> I think that's I think that's really bizarre, yeah? And I think that got me sort of interested in um, the way that people create art, you know. So would you say you're working more in a kind of a primitive self-expressionist kind of way? Yeah, I've only sort of discovered that since I started doing the painting. I mean, I, I, you know, I've always looked at art and, see, you know, been to, whenever we go away, I always end up going to art galleries because I like them, you know, in the lockdown because I was able to look on, online uh, at lots, lots more different art and, uh, you know, different things that I'd not looked at before uh, and it just sort of, you know, gravitated towards the things that sort of turned me on, which is abstract and expressionism, and just, just paint and abstract shapes and stuff sort of, I, they, you know, I was really getting into that. I still like figurative stuff, but uh, for me, painting now, yeah, I'm on a basically on a mission to try and find my painting. I think everyone's got a certain style, you know, mm. uh, and I, I'm sort of trying to find, you know, the painting that's every, when you look at it, you'll say, "Oh, that's a Jez Kerr." <laughs> at the moment, you know, it almost stuff looks like Rothko because it's just color and stuff like that. But I'm really, you know, really into that and sort of. I'm not bothered where it goes. It's more to do with, uh, you know, it's interesting me uh, in making me, uh, making me sort of carry on and uh, try and find that one where you go, oh, I really like that. That's great. Yeah. yeah. So you said you've got some paintings to show. So you've got some of your own paintings first or which, what's the order? I'll show you these, uh, these, um, if I can do it. Let's see. We can get, yeah. Like these were, um, these are the drawings that I did at the post office. I probably got maybe about a thousand, maybe maybe more than that. I, I did, you know, two or three a day or four a day, and uh, sometimes the same subjects all over and over. Uh, I'll try and find one. Let's just see. Is that looks? Yeah, well, the post office, yeah. So that face at the background there, um, yeah, I, I, I was doing those constantly. You know. Uh, I don't know why, I have no idea. Yeah, there was no, it's just like you got five minutes before the next lot of work comes. So, do, 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 and then just keep it, you know. Uh, and there's loads of them. Yeah, and a friend of mine, when I was working there, a guy called Tony Housen, who wouldn't claim to be, I don't know, he's, he takes photographs, so he is a kind of artist, but he started doing them with me as well. And all his were far better than mine. <laughs> You know, he, he only did a few, but all his are really, they're brilliant, you know. But, uh, yeah. Would these be tapping into your subconscious then? You know, you're not thinking on the top of your head. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. You know, it's just like, a, you know, it's, it, it's, I'm sort of glad I did it because you look at it all and you go, wow, that's a great body of work. And really all it was was sort of, you know, uh, waiting, waiting for the next lot of work to come and you're just sitting there. And you've got uh, these little cards and stuff, uh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, and I just, yeah, I just started doing it, and it just became like sort of a habit. It's, and, uh, uh, it's kind of like a northern 
drawing version of Charles Bukowski. It's exactly. I mean, yeah, I love Bukowski. His stuff's great, you know. And oh, the book, you know, so, you know uh, <laughs> Chinaski or whatever his name was. I, I have lived his life, but uh, no, I, <laughs> I don't drink that much. But um, yeah, I, you know, the, the, uh, I actually use these to sort of um, make some money for Calm, you know, campaign against living miserably. I sort of, uh, I put it on the. Um, I don't know, one of these sites where you can sell your work and they can donate to such and such. And, and quite a few people, I sent them out. I was posting them out to people and said, well, you can get one of the, you know, if you donate, I'll send you one of these. Quite a few people I sent them out to, which I thought was a good idea. <laughs> no, that's a great idea. Just, let me just find some uh, paintings that uh, might interest you. Well, these are an interesting example. I like the idea you can express your art in lots of different mediums. So you can express it in music or in drawing and painting. You can do it in film and painting and talking. Yeah, that's Howard Hodgkin. It's just like paint. I mean, that's where, that's where I'm at at the minute is sort of, I just really like paint on a, on a canvas. <laughs> I just think it's great. It, you know, it's totally makes you, you react to it in a sort of emotive way because there's no figurative thing there. So... You're just reacting to the pain, and you, it sort of makes you start and go, "Well, what the hell is that?" You know. <laughs> I know you could say how you could say such a lot with so little is quite. Yeah. Important. Yeah, getting back to the Eraserhead thing though, because that 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 film was really important. I, that was the one of the first films that I saw that sort of had had to, uh, you know all my sort of interest in painting and everything in a film, and uh, I can remember seeing David Lynch and in in, in an interview. Um, he said, uh, and, and one of the first interviews he did, I think, and it was with an English journalist. And they, the journalist said, uh, how did you, you decide to be a filmmaker? And uh, he, he said he was a painter because he was at art school. And he went home one night and he was doing this painting of a garden and uh, it was all green and stuff. There was a little bit of red in the middle of the, of the painting. And he said he was just watching the painting and the bit of red moved. And so the interviewer said, oh, well, so you'd been, you must have been, you know, drinking or doing something or whatever. He said, no, no, actually, it moved. The red bit moved. He was convinced that it actually moved. And that's what basically started him on, on you know, making film that's, films that aren't that moved. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in the film Inland Empire, which I find fascinating, he it, it freezes the frame a lot of the time. He's always playing with the surface of the film. Um, one of those shots, one of the early shots, it's like the, you've got this close-up of the, the actress, and, but in the background, it's all moving. All, all, everything's moving. He's messing around with the little different bits of the screen, which I find fascinating. You know, that, that, that's like, a, it's, it's sort of like film, but it's sort of like painting as well. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's brilliant. He's brilliant. He, really is. he does play with your senses, and also he really does tap into the subconscious, which I guess is what all great art or music does as well, isn't it? Yeah, I've just been watching uh, Fritz Lang as well. I've been watching all his, this last week, I've just been watching Fritz Lang, three movies on YouTube. Metropolis, M is my favourite. Uh, the editing and the way that he uses silences and stuff. Very like Eraserhead. I think he must have watched uh, uh, Fritz Lang quite a lot. Or, mm. And also the cheapness of the way that uh, Lynch made his film. You know, I don't think it cost him that much. It was well, he was at university or you know, just after it didn't cost him that much but it looks fantastic so stylish mm -hmm. uh and you know i'm that's what i've started to make some movies as well uh little just in iMovie but you know we're still using stills and stuff and making it because it you know it's not difficult to actually create a little world out of not very much <laughs> that's one of the things that you said actually in that um i've just watched the thing with david lynch it's one hour of david lynch uh, listening to rain, smoking a cigarette, and reflecting on art. <laughs> <laughs> so I just watched that before we did this, and uh, yeah, quite a bizarre little program. You know, the, into he's there, sort of just sitting in front of the microphone, big gaps of uh, just the rain coming down, and then he'd say something, have an idea. One of them was, uh, uh, you know, when he was little, his world was just a couple of blocks, but he said everything's in that couple of blocks. You know, the way that he looks at the world is really fascinating. I think. Micro. And I think all artists, anybody who paints and stuff and puts that sort of process into the painting, it's, uh, yeah, it, I think I find that fascinating. Mm. So you said you had some other slides of other paintings. That, that, um, uh, yeah, let's have a look. 
Oh yeah, this artist, Mary Oppenheim. Have you heard of her? Yeah, I mean, it's surrealists and surrealism. Uh, Marguerite, especially, he, you know, all those images that were brand new in the what twenties, thirties, or whenever they were doing it. Uh, the, uh, it's still resonating today in in advertising and everything, especially people like Marguerite. Who's who's let's find a, a Marguerite one that I really like. I really like that one you got there. It's great. The upper line. Yeah, it's just a pair of gloves <laughs> with with the well, it, it's a pair of gloves, but uh, I can't remember the title of that. But um, with that, obviously. It's quite macabre, though, and it? it looks like that. Yeah, well, she did that. She did that one. That's that's the most famous one of hers. It's just the fur teacup. Yeah, uh, and you know, uh, it's interesting her story. I mean, she made so much great art and was a great painter. But you know, nobody uh, only if you say Merit Oppenheim, everybody just says that's the work. That's what I was saying about you know before about you. Everybody's got one artwork, and she hasn't. She's got thousands, but <laughs> everybody knows that. Everybody knows that teacup. Yeah. Uh, so that's the other that's the other side of the story is how people relate to art and uh, you know the business of art and the, the mm. money of art you know which is a completely different thing for me. It's like the process and actually doing it is 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 why you do it. All that other stuff, it's a that's a completely different thing. Fascinating in itself, but um, you know more interested in the yeah, art. Almost similar to the way music works as well, isn't it? That, I think that's what I like about um, <coughs> abstract art is that it has itself. You know, you have to you have to do a bit of the work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not just a field. You go there's a field. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna find something else here. Oh, this is this is an interesting artist called uh, what's her name now? Um, Hilma Af Clint. She's a uh, she's a very strange artist. Yeah, uh, Kandinsky is sort. Of, uh, yeah, Kandinsky was a, a Russian artist in 19 or whatever. And he was, he's regarded as being one of the first abstract paints. He created the first very abstract, completely abstract paintings. Whereas this Swedish woman uh, lady, Hilma Afklin, was doing it, you know, 10 years before him. And she she was hearing voices and stuff. And her all her art, were, um, she got messages from angels that told her how to draw and, and what to paint, uh, which I find fascinating, you know. And I just... I, you know, obviously, it was a completely different world then. Uh, she and Kandinsky doing these sort of completely uh, random images, and how they how they sort of arrived at it. Especially Kandinsky, he was a bit of a bit of a thinker. I like his paintings because they look like free jazz, which is I think what they're about. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's one of his. Yeah, that I think that's the one actually. The painting that was uh, has been called the first. Uh, it's it's not quite the full painting there because of the way it's edited it. But um, yeah, it's just random shapes, and it, it was to do with music. His his painting was all about music and rhythm. Mm. And so basically, what he's doing there is painting music, which is a fascinating idea. It, it sort of it was painting the notes and sort of what he felt. He had a bit of a eureka moment. I think after he'd seen a concert, he went home and painted it. You try uh, to do that at all, or, or do you find because I you're... haven't not at the minute? No, uh, you know, I'm still working out the process, <laughs> it's just sort of <laughs> learning how the paint works and sort of colors work. You know, um, it's it's very easy to copy things, you know, like I say, everything that I do looks like Rothko at the minute, but mm. you know, I, I, I it, it's a slow process, you know, there's I'm not in any rush. <laughs> 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 no, 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 no one is in these times. <laughs> but I also like that. I also like um, the idea of, of you know putting your paintings on. You know, this doesn't have to be on canvas. It can be on quite. A, I do like sculpture as well, and sort of. So yeah, it's just a it's, it's a matter of getting the um, the practicals of it sorted out, and uh, you know, getting the materials, and having the idea and the time to do it. You know. So you do like one painting a day at the moment, or you just. I sort of got like, uh, you know, six or seven on the go at once, clustering up the flat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I've hit on the, I've sort of got a bit of a style at the minute. It just It's basically just colours and with edges, <laughs> colours and edges. Uh, and I'm sort of quite, yeah, that's that's satisfying what I'm doing at the minute. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with what I'm doing at the moment. And surely great okay. art is what, what it means to you personally. To, to, like you said, for the business side, it's totally different, isn't it? This, this well, is some people have asked me uh, on, online and said, have you got any of these for sale or whatever, you know? And, uh, well, 
you know, they could be for sale. I, it, pff, at the moment, I'm trying to figure out how to hang them. You know, yeah. I've got these bits of MDF, uh, and I'm figuring out a way to, instead of putting them in frames, is just to hang them as they are. So uh, that's my next practical thing that I've got to work out, which I find, you know, that's a good challenge. Mm. Having to do that, you know, I mean, I could go to a frame shop and say, well, you'd frame that, but I'd rather do it myself, you know, because I'm sure it's not that difficult to uh, maybe fix a bit of wood on the back so you could put a string around and hang it. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's, what that's it, style. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm looking at now. It's quite, yeah, I mean, I've given a couple of paintings away uh, but yeah, I'd like to give more away, you know. If, and if we can figure out how to hang them, it'd be easier to give them away. <laughs> can we see any of them, or have you got any slides of them? Uh, I've got a. Yeah, I've got any slides of those? Not really. Let's put. Um, yeah, this one. Mm, that's nice. It's just yellow, basically gold. <laughs> 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 and that's like the sort of the that when I when I told you about the canvas that I did that was just a yellow um a yellow line across. Uh that's, that's an extension of it, just it's just a, a yellow. Mm -hmm. It's not on a canvas, it's on one of the MDF boards that I've got. But yeah, I really like that. It's so and you look at it in in different light, you know, because it's, it's I quite like it, you know. It's, it's, what, it's quite engulfing, isn't it? It's it's it seems to go... Yeah, like Rothko stuff. I mean, what I like about... I saw some of his... Uh, an exhibition of his in London uh, quite a while back. And it was just a succession of rooms uh, separated by curtains. I can't remember where it was at. Maybe the Tate, I'm not sure. Uh, but each sort of little space that you went into, the, the picture just completely took over you. The cut, And it was the colour that just took over you. And that, you know, I really remember that. And that, that's where I'm sort of... That's where I'm getting into because it, it, I really like it. <laughs> I think the colours have a really good, you know, a really big effect on you. And, uh, you know, in non-figurative painting, I think colour is really important. And uh, that's where I'm at at the minute, just enjoying sort of messing with the things that I'm doing. <laughs>